All right. So basically, city. First question on your for your open ended. City pack a hot hamburger into a styrofoam box. After ten minutes, she opened the box and she noticed the cover with was wet with water droplets and the bun had become soggy. So obviously, when you attempt questions like this, you should identify what exactly is the topic and concept. So we need to annotate. So you see the word hot, you see the word wet water droplets. So ask yourself, which topic would you actually find words like um, wet and um, water droplets? So obviously, the topic that we have here would be your water cycle, right? Because that's where you find things like water droplets. Now, the concept that I'm testing you over here would be condensation, evaporation and condensation. Now, when you talk about the water cycle, uh, your condensation and your and your um, evaporation, the area at which you find water droplets is your cooler surface. So you must always understand that there are two regions that are involved for condensation. You have your warmer region and you have your cooler region. So your warmer region in this case must be where your warmer wave water vapor would be. And then your cooler region is where you will find your water droplets. So they already told you that okay, the water droplets okay, can be found on the cover. So this must be your cooler surface where condensation has occurred. That is how you identify which area is your surface, your cooler surface for condensation. Okay? Please annotate everything exactly here. Now, so what are some of your keywords? So your keywords would be, of course, condensation, Evaporation, loss heat, touch, water vapor. So these are some of the keywords that is associated with the concept of evaporation and condensation, which you will write it under this box. Now, explain why and how the bun had become soggy. Soggy means that it's soaked up with water. Right? Okay, now, so in this process, you know that it's water cycle. So for water cycle, you need to have water vapor. So ask yourself, where did you actually get this water vapor from? Now, there is two ways of uh, answering this question. I'm going to tell you the one that is more common, okay, or more widely accepted. Now, the first thing you need to understand is that there is no steam inside here because no water is boiling. Steam, only, steam is water vapor when it is at 100 degrees, okay? I need to make this very clear. So what actually happens here is two things. It's either the surrounding water vapor in the surrounding air inside the box gain heat from your hamburger, all right, and become warmer. That's the first answer I accept. The second answer, which is more common, is that the moisture that is inside the bun itself would, would have gained heat and then it will have evaporated. Gain heat from where? We can say gain heat from the bun that is accepted because your bun is being heated up. So gain heat from the hot bun and then it will have evaporated into water vapor. All right, so you can write this down. So moisture or water or liquid in the bun gained heat from the hot bun and 
evaporated into warm water vapor. Okay, and then what happened is warmer water vapor touches the cooler side okay, cooler surface of the underside of the box loses heat to the box and condenses to form water vapor, uh, water droplets. So what are my marking key points? So my marking key points will be first, okay, where is heat gain from? From where to where? Something that we've talked about in topical practice set one. The second marking point that I want to see is evaporated into water vapor. The next marking point I want to see would be touches the cooler surface and then after that lost heat and not forgetting condenses to form water droplets so this is standard so I strongly suggest that you remember how is this being answered for all water cycle these are definitely the key marking points the only difference is the source of water liquid may be different. It could be from a beaker. The heat source will also be different. It could be a Bunsen burner. It could be a heating plate, depending on the question. Okay, the cooler surface you need to identify. Okay, it will not always be the cooler underside of a box. It depends on the question. It could be like in the previous one, in the previous practice paper, it was um, the aluminium tray, right? So it depends on the question, but everything else is a standard. Later on, when we attempt other questions further down, you will notice that it's exactly the same. It's just that the heat source has been changed. The source of liquid has been changed. The cooler surface has been changed. Other than that, everything else remains the same. Okay? Now, the next question said, City's friend suggested using a paper box instead of a styrofoam box. So this is actually your change variable in a certain way, right? To prevent the box from becoming soggy, okay? What um, will the suggestion work? Why? So first off, you have to answer: Will it will it work or not? So this is actually a yes and no question, right? That's the first thing you need to talk about. However, some of you have just plainly ignored the yes or no part and just jumped into explanation. You would have lost mark because. As an examiner, when I mark your paper, I do not know. I will not know. Your explanation, is it explaining for yes or is it explaining for no? Okay? So, they ask you to explain why. Now, the answer for this will be a flat yes. So, why yes? Now, there's two parts of this. You need to have the cause and you need to have the effect. So we know that the difference between your styrofoam box and your paper box is that one is absorbent and the other isn't. Absorbent means it is able to absorb water. So your paper being absorbent would be able to absorb any moisture. All right, that part, no issue. So I'm going to write the first part down. Yes, paper can absorb water droplets form on the underside 
of the box. Okay, this part no issue. This is the cost. Okay, this is the cost. Now comes the effect, cost and effect. So remember, we talked about soggy. Soggy that means soaked with water. Right? Soaked with water. So basically, you need to say that because the water no longer drips down. That's why it doesn't become soggy anymore. So because your paper can absorb the underside of water, it basically prevents water droplets from dripping down on the bun. Right? Now, this is the part where many of you did not get the marks. This is your effect. So, if let's just say you have a missing key concept, bracket E, it means your effect is missing. Alright? But we always do our correction in full because I want you to practice. Alright? looking at how a full complete answer is crafted all right question eight jack is perspiring perspiring profusely after a run he sits down to rest Okay. Now, what is the concept being tested here? Now, for this, right, um, we take a look at the question. Explain how his perspiration helps him to cool down. So think about it. When you want to cool down, you're talking about removing heat, right? So in this case, the concept that they are testing you, you ask yourself, be the processes that you've learned, between evaporation and condensation, which process takes in heat? Your answer would be evaporation. Because in order to evaporate, your liquid will need to take in heat. Okay? So some of the keywords would include heat gain okay heat gain all right evaporation and of course okay uh, we can talk about cooling down now so i'm going to actually zoom in to explain what happens here now Think about it. Perspiration is basically your liquid part. So we have identified that you want your liquid part to evaporate. In order for your liquid to evaporate, you will need heat gain. Correct? In order to evaporate, you will need to gain heat. So then the question you can do is, ask yourself, where is this liquid located? So this liquid is located, let's just say, on his arm. Right? His forehead and... Okay, now, what happens is, where does he gain the heat from? So as you know, this person must be very hot. It's a very hot person. So, therefore, okay, he would have probably be flushed, right? Ooh, so hot. Okay. And then after that, between the liquid perspiration and his body, we would definitely see that his body is a lot hotter. So, heat will be lost from his body and gained by his perspiration. 
This would then cause his perspiration to evaporate. Now I'm just drawing the lines to show evaporation. You will not be able to see. You can observe the effects of evaporation, but you cannot really exactly see it because water vapor is invisible. All right, so this is what happens. So there is this word that I use inside your, your um, topical practice, if you did not get it correct. The word I use is conduct. Okay, now conduct means to actually draw heat. Okay, so when you use the word conduct, okay, um, it, it, it removes away the need to say from where to where. You just say conducts heat away from the body. The perspiration, which is the liquid, conducts heat away from the body. So I'm going to write down two ways of answering this, right on top of each other, so you can see the difference. Okay, so you would say his perspiration conducts heat away from his body. That's the first way. The second way that is the equivalent point would be his perspiration gained heat from his body. Okay, these two are same. Alright? When it evaporates. So the marking point would be conduct heat away as well as evaporate. So I must see these two points because heat is needed for liquid to evaporate. So when you sweat, your heat will, your sweat will draw heat or your perspiration will draw heat from your body causing your liquid uh, perspiration to evaporate. Okay, so when it evaporates, it removes the heat. Okay, now this question, this question, one look at it, you talk about a fan, right? Explain how a fan will help Jack to cool down faster. So ask yourself this question, what is related to fan under the topic of water cycle? Okay, so you think about it, and then you would realize that, okay, a fan produces wind, right? So your wind, okay, when, when, when did I see this topic of wind? Ah, I know already. So what they're testing me is actually factors affecting rate of evaporation, right? So that's where I need to come up with my WET. So W stands for wind and I know that an increase of any of this factor will lead to a higher rate of evaporation, right? So W is wind, E stands for exposed surface area, T stands for temperature, okay? I'm not going to write it down, you should know that by heart now. So I know that in my answer, I have to talk about wind. And then I will talk about how it increases the rate of evaporation. Okay, since the first part here, we already know that through evaporation, heat will be lost, right? So if I can make evaporation happen faster, it also means that his heat loss will be faster. So how do I craft this answer? Now, the first thing I need to see is that you tell me that the fan produces wind. You cannot say the fan increases rate of evaporation simply because if I put a fan there and I don't turn on the fan, nothing will happen, right? It's just a fan. That's why when, I, when you come to class, you always go, Mr. Chong, can you please turn on the fan? It's very warm. If you just tell me, oh, a fan will increase evaporation, I would have told you no need to turn on the fan because a fan will naturally keep you cool. That's not true. Only a turned on fan will keep you cool. So be very careful like that. So what happens is, 
If we put it into words, you have to say the fan helps to move air. Now, if you do not want to use this, you must put that produces wind. I need to see this. This is the equivalent of this point. All right, and increase thus the rate of evaporation. Okay, of his perspiration. So he is lost to the surrounding at a faster rate. Now take note, ah, what are the marking points? I'm marking for firstly moving air increases rate of evaporation and increased rate of heat loss why because they say cool down faster so i must answer this part the faster the the last part here heat is lost the surrounding faster is answering this part because why i need to answer this part the fact is heat is being lost right whether there is there is a turn on fan or there's no turn on fan heat is being lost but with a turn on fan heat is lost at a faster rate and that is what we are after okay please do your annotation even though if you got it correct because we must never be complacent okay it will help you in your revision later on as you look through your practice questions, you get reminded of how you actually attain the correct answer. Next, a group of survivors crash landed on a deserted island and they did not have water. Okay. Now, this is a real life survival um, experiment. It has been done before. Okay, it will work. Okay, so what did they do? They dug a hole, lined it with a piece of clear plastic, poured some sea water, and placed an empty cup in the middle. Another piece of clear plastic was placed over the entire setup. Okay, held in place by these two rocks, with a piece of stone placed in the middle. Okay, the setup is shown in diagram above. What is the concept? So, concept straight away is water cycle. So what this person is trying to do is to create a water cycle okay, so that you get pure water to drink. So key waters, key, key words would include your evaporation and condensation. Right? Because these are the two important processes that drives the water cycle. So what is liquid D that you collect here? Now before we even jump into it, I'm going to explain to you what actually happens. Now this is actually a model of the water cycle that happens in real life. So the first thing that you need is it will be your sun. Right? So remember in a water cycle, you need water vapor. Where does the water vapor come from? It actually comes from your sea water over here, which I'm coloring it in. Okay, maybe I should have colored in green. Okay. Okay, it looks more greenish. Okay. Now what happens is that the heat from the sun, okay, use red color, heat from the sun, okay, will be gained by your seawater here. So you know that an increase in heat will increase the rate of evaporation. Why? Because of my factors affecting rate of evaporation. So that's why I always stress to you it's very important that you don't be complacent, you write this every time. So because you know that with an increased amount of heat gain, there will be a faster rate of evaporation okay, of your water. Your salt and all the other debris will stay behind in the water. It will not be evaporated. So you are right to say that 
if you leave it long enough, after all the water uh, has evaporated, you will find salt oh, and other debris, of course, it's, it's seawater, it's not salt solution. If it's salt solution, yes, you will see salt only, but in reality, if it's seawater, you have other debris, which I don't know what is it, it could be pebbles, it could be sand, it could be other dissolved elements, I don't know, but basically they'll be left behind. So they will evaporate and what happens is this part over here which I'm now going to color in blue okay dark blue or dark purplish blue this is your cooler surface okay this is your cooler surface so when your water vapor goes up and touches the cooler surface over here it will lose heat Remember, touches cooler surface, lose heat. And because that is called a cooler surface, you must have a warmer water vapor. It's a comparison term, right? So it will lose heat and then it will condense to form your liquid water droplets. Now, what is this stone over here for? This stone is not for fun. This stone is placed so that it will weigh the plastic down and what it does is that it causes a depression like a V-shape downwards. So this will help direct the liquid water droplets to flow towards the center of the plastic sheets. Now when the droplets flow towards the center, they will meet over here and what will happen is you will form you will start to pull and form bigger droplets when it's too heavy it will fall into the cup and this is exactly what happens all right in a real water cycle right i told you all right so when you think about it the plastic sheet is like your cooler atmosphere high up your water droplets over here are like your clouds. Your clouds are made out of very tiny water droplets. Okay, and then after that, when they gather, okay, to become bigger droplets, when it's too heavy, it will fall as rain. Okay, and that's how you collect your pure water. So what is liquid D? I've already explained, it's actually water or better still, pure water. I will only accept these two answers. Not drinking water, like I've explained. Mineral water is also drinking water. Now, after a few hours, liquid D found was found in the cup. Sorry, found in the cup that was empty at the beginning. Explain how liquid D was found. So basically, they are asking you to explain the whole water cycle. But this time round, you need to take reference to this setup. So remember, I told you that you have to memorize the steps. This setup is essentially the same as this question. No difference at all, except that your cooler surface would have changed, your source of your heat source would have changed, your liquid source would have changed. Other than that, it's all the same. So how does it look like? Okay. So we would say that. The sea water, this is your liquid source, gained heat from the sun. Remember, I always tell you you need to mention a source. Okay? And evaporated. Right? The two driving forces of water cycle, evaporation and condensation into water vapor. Right? And then after that, warmer water vapor would then touch the cooler surface the plastic sheet okay lost heat to it and condense 
into water droplets. Okay, so what are the marking points? The marking points would be gain heat from where? Evaporated into water vapor Touches cooler surface Lost heat And of course, condense into water droplets Which then float into the cup Now the next part, explain why a stone is placed on the plastic sheet. So like I told you, it is to weigh the center down, to create some form of a depression, right? A depression or a dent in or a cave in. So a lot of you use, use very vague words like curve, is to create a curve. But a curve can mean curve upwards or curve downwards, right? So you need to have directions, okay? So what you should say would be the stone helps to create a depression to direct the water droplets to the center of the setup. Now, why do they want to direct it to the center? So that they will meet and then to form larger droplets so that it will form. Because if you don't get them to flow towards the center and meet each other, the water droplets will not get bigger. So the whole idea is to make it bigger so that it will drop. And then you put your cup there at the area that they need, right? It only makes sense to collect the uh, droplets of water. Okay, so if you want, you can further explain over here. Now this is not part of the answers, but I'm just writing it down so that you know why is it important for them to meet, okay? Which is to form larger droplets, okay? If they don't form larger droplets, it won't fall off the plastic sheet. Now, the next question. So for the next question, Mary placed a clear flask of cold water on a glass beaker of hot water. She left the setup aside for 10 minutes. Okay, now, so when you take a look at this, what will Mary observe after a while? So this question is actually on a on a um, concept of water cycle again, actually. So your keywords will be evaporation and condensation. Now, look at 
the question. The keyword here is observe. So observe, observe means that it must something that you are able to see. Write this down. Very important. So if you're not able to see, um, you cannot put it as an answer. All right. I know many of you have talked about the whole water cycle. Some of you, but. You cannot really see evaporation, but you can see the effects of evaporation, right? Which is the amount of water being lesser. You cannot see condensation, but you can see the effects of condensation, whereby water droplets are formed. Okay, so what will happen is that water droplets will actually be formed over here at the bottom of the flask. Why? Because your hot water over here would have evaporated right so it's very warm so warmer water vapor would then touch the cooler surface of the bottom of the flask now in actual fact you won't only just see um uh water droplets at the side you will also see a bit of water droplets at the side over here because there are in your surrounding air, you also have warm water vapor in the surrounding air. Let's be honest, Singapore is about what 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, you say cold water, cold water, I'm assuming is about maybe 10 degrees Celsius or 12 degrees Celsius. So, you will see some condensation. It's just like you put a glass of ice water out, you will see water droplets forming on the outside. So what will you see? So what you would see would be that okay, she will observe water droplets forming on the outer end of the bottom of the flask okay yeah. so you don't have to specifically talk about this part lah, because this is like a bonus answer but what you will definitely see is this part because of the temperature difference okay this is hot water and this is a cold region so remember I told you this students, the greater the difference between the water vapor and the cooler surface, the faster the rate of condensation because of what? Rapid heat loss. So let's just say we have water vapor over here. Scenario A, this is water vapor over here. And then after that, you have a temperature of say sorry yeah let me redo this again let's say two region over here region a and region b region b and region c so this region b here i put a piece of glass and then over here the temperature of region a i'm going to put it at 40 degrees celsius region c i'm going to put it at 20 degrees Celsius. So what you would see is that there is actually more water droplets on this side as compared to this side. Reason being that heat will be transferred from the warmer water vapor to the cooler surface of B at a faster rate. So because heat is being transferred at a faster rate, you also have a uh, higher rate of condensation. Okay, now let's take a look at this question. Mary said that the setup is similar to a water cycle. Fill in the correct apparatus and processes that corresponds to the water cycle. Some key idea processes water cycle so think about it what are the processes we have learned that is actually similar to
your water cycle. Okay? So we know that the two processes that drives your water cycle for sure, okay, would be your evaporation and your condensation. So somewhere along, you definitely will, will have to mention this too. Some students will tell me heat gain, heat loss. Okay? But ask yourself, they already told you they wanted water cycle, processes that is associated with it. So it has to be either these two. Now, so your sea and your river is your hot water. The processes that um, involve your hot water will be your evaporation, right? And then your sky is like the bottom of the flask. whereby it is cooler. Think about it, it's like the cooler atmosphere, right? As you go higher. And then the process, because there is heat loss, would be condensation. And then your rain is talking about the water that falls, okay? Or water droplets in this case. Next. Mary prepared another similar setup, this time round with a change of water condition. So what happened? They swap the hot water with the cold water. Now, please, I want to stress, uh, this is very important, I'm going to write this in red. Use pencil for drawing of diagrams. Now this is very important, in fact I'm going to highlight it many times. This is because when you draw diagrams, there is a very high tendency that you need to make changes. And don't use a light, um, a light pencil, use a darker shade so that the examiner can see it clearly. So over here, now remember I told you, Condensation will have, you can only observe condensation because you can look at the water droplets. You cannot observe evaporation. Because can you see water vapor? The answer is no. So you ask yourself, if I can only observe condensation, which is represented by water droplet, where will this water droplet form? And to answer that question, we always ask ourselves this question. Where is the cooler surface? So if you ask this question, you will note that the cooler surface is actually over here. Right? Because this is the cooler, uh, this is actually the cooler area. Now, therefore, you would find most of your water vapour being on the outside here. Okay? And very small amounts over here. At the mouth of your... At the mouth, the inside part of your glass over here okay because the warm water will rise and touch the cooler surface which is over here that is not in contact with your hot water so this region compared to the water vapor is still cooler this region is still cooler than your water vapor which is over here your, your warm water vapor so it will still lose heat and you will still condense. So this is what you would see.